Hello and welcome to the Pro Tips to Preview Show. I'm joined here by Pro Tipster Dan, and we're going to take a look at some of the massive games happening in Europe this Saturday. We have the London Derby between Arsenal and Tottenham. We also have the Madrid Derby. Atletico are at home to Real. Then we have the Rome Derby where uh, Roma are at home to Lazio and there's a match in Naples as well involving Napoli and AC Milan. Daniel, how are you? I'm not too bad, I'm not too bad. Um, probably in a better mood than you are. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I was pretty distraught last night. I watched the match and after the match I was watching RTE had a, a Johnny Giles documentary mm. on. That made me even sadder because I just kind of came to realise that there's no one like Johnny Giles coming up and we'll never see the like of him again. But uh, look, Ireland were beaten by him. Just the, the Christian Eriksen show. He he was outstanding. You know. Yeah. The big question is, can he continue it on Saturday? Oh well, look, I have it written down here. Look, Eriksen hangover. Two Carlsbergs probably in Dublin last night. Yeah. Um. I I was really disappointed in Ireland. I I, I backed them to win as well. I've lost money on them. <laughs> Shane Duffy scored, and I thought, great. You know. Like like you said, you know, Ireland go one up and then defend, but yeah. defending was atrocious. Oh, was awful. And I, I was reading, um, I was reading an article today where, where some of the Danish press was, set up, I think it was the Danish manager was saying like Ireland were playing a diamond, and he just gave Christian Eriksen mm. all the room in the world to play. Yeah. You know, you, Nicholas Bentner scored for God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? Nicholas, oh God, he, there was a very good tweet though. Paddy Power sent out. Did you see it with the yeah in his underpants saying uh, Judas or something? It was very very good. Look, um, so you're very happy the international break is over. I actually do like international football, but now I've nothing to look forward to now for the World Cup. I'll probably have to support Poland or I don't know. I can't even support Italy, my second team. Look, let's get on to the Premier League then. Arsenal are playing Spurs. It's the early kickoff. Arsenal sixth. Spurs are in third. Look, I'm not a massive fan of early matches. I think they can be. Pretty damn no, spoons, like. I, I agree. I, as a football fan, um, early matches suck because you know there's less time to go to the boozer beforehand. <laughs> and you have to get up early, and you walk out the game afterwards, so like staring at bright light. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't like them. Um, Arsenal. I've been reading what Arsenal fans are saying, and Arsenal fans are normally quite ebullient about this kind of fixture, you know, because like they've had the. the, the They've been in front of Spurs for so long, but of course it's changed now, and er they they know everyone's making fun of them. They know that you know they're like a. I think there was um there was a tweet with the John Lewis Christmas advert where like Arsene Wenger gets a fourth place in Premier League trophy <laughs> because that's about what they're aspiring to yeah, at the moment. Yeah. Well, it, it's a mess. Like, well, okay, look, I have I have a really interesting stat here, and it says Arsenal have won the last ten games in a row at home. And it's something you don't realise because they get such bad, they're going through such bad press at the minute. But this whole thing with, with Sanchez and Ozil, I mean, it's an absolute catastrophe. What's going on with them? Like either get rid of them, get that, get that, you know, get that cancer out of the body, or or just sign them or just yeah, sort it out. The Arsenal fans I was reading were saying drop them if they don't want to play. If they don't want to uh, sign a new contract, drop them. Mm. But I don't think Arsenal can afford to. I don't think they've got the quality. Was, you know, the players they're suggesting to bring in instead, Jack Wilshire, uh, he'll be fit for about 20 minutes. <laughs> Danny Welbeck, about half an hour. <laughs> um, I, I read a stat that of the last six North London derbies, Arsenal have won one. What have I got here? Yeah. Uh, They've won one in the last six. Head head, yeah, but most of them have been draws. I have most a, of them have been draws. This is true. It's Arsenal unbeaten and seven at home, uh, but three, uh, yeah, just loads of draws. Loads of draws. Yeah, and also the Arsenal fans are bricking it because Mike Dean's ref. Yeah. And they hate him. They hate him. So, um, I think, I honestly think, I, I've not really looked at the odd checks. It's a little bit early. Mm. You know, we're recording on Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. So. Well, I'll give them to you. I have the Arsenal 2.41, uh, the draw 3.55, and Spurs to win is 2.86. Overs. Is 1.62 uh, over 3.5 is 2.5, and both teams to score is 1.54. There's not much value here, really, no. is there? At the moment, I, I'd be looking. I'd be looking at how many of the Spurs players who didn't play for England, i.e., uh, Kane, <laughs> Ali, all of them, all of them. <laughs> yeah, how many of those are fit? Um, I saw that Giroud might be out. I saw people were worried Lacazette might be out. But uh, he's not playing him anyway. Um, What's going on there? Well, he played Lacazette, their the normal front threes, Ozil, Sanchez, Lacazette. Lacazette scored last mm. night against Germany. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
I don't know if Mustafi's back either, but I don't think he'll make much difference. Mm. The, the, I mean, the good thing is, maybe something to look forward to is that they are they're both scoring plenty, plenty of goals. Arsenal have scored uh, two or more in 9 out of 10 at home. Spurs have scored two or more in, in 7 out of 10 away. Mm. Uh, Arsenal, though, they've seven clean sheets out of the last 10. Spurs have four. You don't, you don't expect Arsenal to have seven clean sheets. It's, it's a funny thing, because... Like there, there is this bad reputation in in the press, but actually the home record is it's quite good. Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it's like this is the problem with the media is that they they kind of fuel these things, and then you got like this Arsenal fan TV thing as well, and like they, they come across as a, a bunch of whiners sometimes. You know, try supporting a crap team like I do. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but um, yeah, well. I don't know. Um, at the moment, I'm kind of leaning towards the Spurs win. But, mm. um, I think what I would look at this one is who's fit. Because, you know, um, with the international break, you know, you get players reporting back. See, see who's fit, who isn't. You know, like Kane was out with an injury, but I'm, I'm sure he'll be fit. Ali was out with an injury. You've got Trippier. Um, would you go like the, the, the um, Spurs drawn a bit is uh, 2.13? Yeah, it's not bad. That, that doesn't sound too bad as an early bet, but. Um, this one I'm I'm holding off I want to see the lineups. ok let's move on then to the Madrid derby Atletico are at home to Real uh, Atletico 4th Real are 3rd uh, there's some stats here there's been over 2.5 in 15 out of 16 away Real matches over 3.5 in 8 out of 14 and Atletico have scored first in 10 out of 11 games so it looks like there's going to be plenty of goals I think this is going to, this is going to be the match that could get Zinedine Zidane the sack um, Real are coming into it like the, the international break came at the right time for them. Yeah, perfect time for them because you know they, they lost the Spurs, they lost yeah. to Gi- uh, they lost to Girona, and then they beat Las Palmas in the last game before mm. the break. But Ronaldo's got one goal this season. Benzema's got one goal this season. You know they've they've got no Bale's injured still. Mm. Um, they've got injuries all over the show, and then you've got. And, and, is this the right time to play Atletico? Um, Atletico haven't won since September the 23rd. Mm. But um, the two main midfielders, Coke, Coke, Coke yeah. and Carrasco, are going to be back. Mm. And I think that'll make a hell of a difference. Griezmann, he's only got three this season, and there's rumours he's going to Barcelona. And I wonder if he's unsettled. I don't know if you saw the tweet, but like... Uh, you know, there's like um, like he's like uh, looking at um, Barcelona players going... <laughs> <laughs> very good look um, sorry um, uh, let me give you the odds so Atletico to win is 3.23 the draw 3.64 and Real to win is 2.4 overs 1.88 both teams score 1.74 um, at those odds I'd be looking to see what Atletico are maybe plus 0.5 I, re- I would think uh, about 1.6 I have no the Asian handicap has been set at Plus, yeah, plus 0.25, and that's at 1.86. So, yeah, plus 0.5 will be 1.6-ish. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, at the moment, I'd be leaning towards that. Again, it depends on injuries. It depends on who's... who's um, you know, Real Madrid have got seven or eight players who yeah. can come... You know, how many of those are going to come back? Are Coke and Carrasco going to come back? But at the moment, I'll be leaning towards um, Atletico Madrid not to lose. And yeah, I'll be looking at what price Zidane and Sakharov as well. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks good on paper that they're scoring plenty, uh, both e- even though Real's mm. goals are coming from all over the place. Like Atletico have scored two or more in nine out of ten. Real have scored two or more in seven out of ten uh, away matches. But it's the head to head where it, it it changes a bit. There's only been overs in the last five out of ten, and both teams to score has also only been in the last five out of ten. Yeah. So I think this is this is probably pushing up the odds. Of overs up to 1.88, like we saw, like this in the, the previous match, Spurs overs, and that was only 1.62. Yeah, you know, so yeah, but th- that's mathematically correct because um, I think you told me the stats. Arsenal is, you see, it, five, uh, five out of ten yeah, for Arsenal. Yeah. Spurs is six out of ten, so that's an average of what 55 percent, which is 1.81. Mm-hmm. So if you take off the bookies 10 percent commission, which is 0.18, you get 1.63. Yeah. 
So yeah, 1.62 is about where it should be. But it's exactly the same for this. Atletico over 5, Real over 6. So it should also be around 1.81. It's priced 1.88. So you are getting a little bit of value here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so, yeah. You know? So maybe it so might, might be worth a shot. I hope it's going to be a good match anyway. They always are. Plenty of bookings and red cards and a lot of anger. So <laughs> I love the Madrid derbies. Uh, anything else then over move? Yeah, so Bale, or, uh, Bale, Bale is still out. Zidane, I, I'm with you here. I, I, I think he's a charlatan. I don't think he has a clue what he's doing. And every, every <laughs> I put out a tweet uh, the first uh, when, when they won the first Champions League, and whenever they win it now, I'm always getting abuse for this tweet. Trolls uh, that have found me, and they're always from Saudi Arabia as well, always saying I don't have a clue what I'm talking about. But I'm, I'm still adamant. I don't think Zidane has a notion what he's no, doing. No, I don't. I don't. I think um, I think he's been found out. And the thing is, you look at you look at their team. Their teams they've they've got some really really uh-huh. good players. You know, like the Galacticos of like they're still there. And it's like imagine how bad they'd be if they if they didn't have Modric and Cruz. I'd say they'd be they'd be in bits. You know, there's yeah. what's holding that 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 team together. Like if they didn't have if that hadn't happened to any of them, if they got badly injured or anything, it'd be in massive trouble. You know. Let's move on to uh, to Rome then. Rome Derby. So Roma are in fifth. Lazio are in fourth. A resurgent Lazio thanks to Chiro Immobile banging in goals left, right and centre. Uh, some stats then before I give you the odds. Over 2.5 in 10 out of 15 Roma home matches and over two over 2.5 in 10 out of 10 Lazio away matches. That's lovely. Both teams are on massive winning streaks yeah. as well. I think Lazio have won nine in a row. Uh, I only have the last 10. Uh, Lazio have seven out of the last 10 and Roma have uh, six, six Ro- wins. Lazio have won nine of their, their last nine competitive matches in a row. Mm. Uh, Roma have won five in a row since they drew 3-3 with Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, it's going to be tasty, isn't it? It's going to be tasty. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I, I saw Roma against uh, Chelsea when they did them 3-0. And I, oh, Chelsea were poor, mm. don't get me wrong. But, you, you know, Stephen al Sharawi. Mm. Looks like a player. Yeah. Rajan Nangolan. Mm-hmm. Is that how you say his name? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, quality. Absolute quality. And then you've got Immobile, who's got 14 and 11 Serie A games yeah, this season. Yeah. Although we couldn't score in the internationals. No. Thanks, Chiro. You let me down <laughs> there, buddy. Um, yeah, it's. I, I, it is going to be a, a cracker of a game. Let me give you the odds then. So Roma to win are 2.31. The draw, 3.52. Lazio to win, 2.98. Overs is only 1.55, but over 3.5 2.36. Both teams to score 1.51. It's not much value here if you're going for goals. No, I'd, I don't you're think You're better so. off going for one of the teams probably. Yeah, I mean, this one, again, is one where you want to be looking at the lineup, see who's coming back from international duty fit and who isn't. Um, I'd be wondering, personally, like, is Immobile, like, you know, well, where is he in? What headspace is he in after mm. that result against Sweden? You know? Um, well, the thing is, like, okay, he has no World Cup to look forward to, mm. but they're not, they're not after a Champions League or anything like that. You know, so maybe he can maybe he can rouse them and just say, right, this this is our chance now. But then again, there's a, there's a few teams in Italy like that. Napoli are the same. Napoli are out of the Champions League. Mm. You know, a lot of their, their Italian players have nothing to look forward to now next summer. So they can band together and say, right, come on, this is our opportunity because Juventus have have the Champions League to think of. You know, it's a good. It's, 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 I don't think Napoli and, and Roma have ever had as, as good a chance to really go for Juventus. It would be good for Italian football as well to break Juve's stranglehold of the, of the Scudetto. Really, would be a good uh, good thing. Um, I was reading something actually talking about strangleholds. How uh, the Champions League has been affected by teams having no competition domestically. So yeah. Juve have won the last four, I think. Uh, PSG in France. Oh, yeah. um, Bayern in Ger- Germany, then you've got the Real Madrid slash Barcelona hegemony in Spain. And like these teams, because they've got no real domestic competition, when they play each other in the Champions League, yeah, they're great attacking, but defensively, they struggle. Mm. And look at Premier League teams, and there's no easy, well, there's very few easy games in the Premier League yeah. anymore. I mean, okay, Man City might be disproving that because this season they look amazing, but. Yeah, and you think to yourself, well, you know, any one of four or five teams could theoretically win the Premier League at the start of the season. So it's like, is the Premier League becoming stronger because so many teams are in with a shout? Now, is this the resurgence for English football? I hope so, because um, 
The other thing that I think uh, uh, this international break has proven is that I should shut my mouth about Gareth Southgate. <laughs> um, because, um, yeah, 2 0 nil draws, but we saw a few players make their debuts. Joe Gomez looked really good. Ruben Loftus cheek needs fitness, but he's going to get that playing for Palace week in, week mm. out. Um, actually, I was, um, his dad was saying, oh, Chelsea left him to rot on the bench, blah, blah, blah. Mourinho like, did his career. I was like, should have moved. Oh, this is like Jack, Jack Grealish's dad. Dads should just stay out of football. Who was the Polish goalkeeper? Wojciech Ch- Ch- Chesney? His yeah. dad was... Uh, don't, yeah. Dads, don't, dads mums, stay away. Girlfriends, <laughs> wives. <laughs> oh, Evan's wife in Northern Ireland. Birmingham City centre-back Mark Roberts. I have to obviously shoot home my own team in. His mum went on Twitter defending him and the uh, team. Leave my boy alone. <laughs> um, look, there's a couple, sometimes you're tempted by bets where you think it's a sure thing. So, for example, both teams to score 1.51. Uh, Roma have only uh, three out of ten clean sheets. Lazio have only one out of ten clean sheets. With an, with, when you get odds like that, are you, ever, are you ever tempted to just say, look, it looks like a banker. I should put money on it. Honest answer is no. Um, I, 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 would, I, would, you, would you then lay it <coughs> if, if you were trading? No, I, 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 just I, leave it. I, I don't trade. And the reason I don't trade is because I'm I'm just not good enough at that sort of thing. And the, the reason I don't go for bankers is, is purely because I'm greedy. I know there are a lot of people out there who, bet, who like bankers because, you know, they like um, high volume, low profit betting. Mm. Great. If that works for them, fantastic. I, I'm not that kind of person. I, I've i always seen gambling as more of a... It's, it's a fun thing. I, I don't really do it to make money. Because if I did, I'd be a complete failure. Of course, because he gets paid a fortune here, lads. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously. Um, but I, 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 like to, I, I like to see gambling as like me pitting my wits against the bookies. So, for example, um, I tipped up, tip of the day, Burkina Faso against Cape Verde. Burkina Faso 2.23 great odds mm. and they, they nailed them 3-0 you know I had um, one in the uh, um, Football League trophy last week 3.87 and I sometimes I think you know I, I, I see gambling as like kind of me versus the bookie and 1.51 is not a fight mm. whereas something over 2 is you I know you. Yeah, so that, you. that's why I tend to and I tend to look for ones where I think the bookie's got it wrong where you know they've priced it too low, or, or sorry, priced it too high, and I'm like, I think that's going to happen. Um, Sweden was another one. I backed Sweden, uh, Italy draw, and uh, that came in at like three point eight something. Mm. It was I, I I looked at it and I was looking at the not uh, plus not point five, so Sweden not to lose. That was two point six four. And I thought there's value there, but I could really go for this here. I, I you know I, I don't think Sweden will win. Yeah. Because Italy never lose at home, but I don't think Italy will win either. So it's like, okay, go for the draw. Mm. And good, yeah, no fair enough. Well, you know, I lost a couple of quid on the Italy one, but that's because I went with the Asian handicap. But anyway, you live and learn. Let's move on to our last one then. Napoli in first position are taking on AC Milan, who are down in seventh. Napoli have won by two or more in eight out of ten, while Milan have conceded first in seven out of nine away matches. Napoli have also won eight out of ten home. The odds. Are low. The odds for Napoli to win are 1.47, draw 4.72, Milan to win 6.34. Overs, over 2.5, 1.48 is low again. Over 3.5 though is 2.2, and both teams to score 1.65. Hard to see Anton really jumping out of here. It's going to be a big match, and Napoli, of course, can you know keep the pressure up or, or can, can stay top. Um, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Is that if you went like three, four years ago, those odds would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happened to Milan? Mm-hmm. Um, Even with all that money, all the investment, they're still not. They need. They need a better manager. You know, this yeah. Benucci, Benucci going to take over the captaincy it hasn't worked out. He's taken on too much of a workload. He's he's Mr. Milan now, and it's. it's I think it's too mm. much for him. You know? For that sort of game, I, Napoli are good at home. I, I would be looking at the Asian handicap, and I think. So it's uh, minus one. Yeah, uh, one point seven five. Still a bit too low, though. Yeah, I mean, minus one means uh, they've, they've got to win by two. If they win by one, you get your state back. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Maybe. The thing is, like, you can definitely see them winning by one, you know. Is but it, is it worth taking a risk at, at, at low-ish odds at 1.75? I don't know. 
I, I, I'd be tempted. I'd be tempted. But um, again, it's one of those ways I, I'd be looking at what players are coming back from mm. international duty. Thanks for joining us then, everyone. And I hope you have a great day watching those matches. I know my wife is going to be furious when I tell her about all the all the football I'm going to be watching on Saturday anyway look make sure and check out protips.com where you can earn real money by sharing your winning tips and coupons and subscribe to our YouTube channel make sure and hit that red button underneath this video and you'll get daily videos previews and podcasts as well that's it then from me protipster Paddy and protipster Dan take it easy